And we are live. Hot on the spot. Hello, Dr. Energy. How are you? I am excellent. How are you this morning, Ra Ra? Oh, I'm just getting my sun rays in between my meetings today. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Thank you for right. being here and holding up the fort and doing all the technology that you do. And welcome to our members and our audience today. We're so yes. happy to be here with you. So my name is Catherine Asaro Myers, affectionately known as Ra Ra is in the house. Good afternoon, good morning, good night, and good evening. See, I mixed it up today. I'm uh, wherever you are. I'm Dr. Job, Dr. Energy Piazza. So today we're going to talk to you about a really important topic. Yeah, it must, get right into it, it. yeah, it must tap into some people's minds right away. Seven high tech gadgets that can be hurting you. Let's talk about IT. I want to know if we can talk about these gadgets, if you don't mind. Can we start there? Do you think yeah, we have enough let's, time? Yeah, okay. let's go there, and then we can talk about uh, six ways. We'll talk about the seven way the gadgets can be hurting us and then we can go into the six ways to right, get more that's what I from the book yeah perfect okay awesome so seven ways high-tech gadgets could be hurting you computer vis vision syndrome mm. oh my gosh i'll mention it you want to talk about it and then we'll go we'll sort of take turns sure we can do that okay yeah sure you want to talk about com computer vision syndrome easy say that for say. times fast computer vision syndrome computer vision syndrome computer vision syndrome <laughs> winner Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, so computer vision syndrome. Our eyes are not meant to stare at a single distance for long periods of time. We're meant to be able to accommodate to different distances. And in fact, this is one of the ways you can regain your eyesight naturally is by practicing accommodating and adapting to different focal distances as you focus on the, on the near and the far, like Grover did back on Sesame Street. Near? Far. <laughs> One of my favorites. The other thing that is the problem with computer vision syndrome is our computer screens, our, all of our devices, the, the monitors, our, tele, our, our smartphones, our game, gaming platforms, all of them emit a lot amount of blue light and blue light can be very harsh on your eyes. So one of the things you can do is actually get a pair of glasses like these ones here, these are actually not a prescription in them. I don't need them to see close up or far away, but they do have a, a coating or a filter on them that filters the blue light so that my eyes aren't taking in so much of that blue light. So my eyes feel more rested and they don't feel like they're burning and dry and itchy at the end of the day. And I feel like I can, and then I also have on my computers and on my smartphone, uh, a a program that actually reduces the blue light even further. And it goes along with the, it's set to go with sunrise and sunset. So the blue light matches the daylight. And that's a really, really useful way to, to do it. The second way that thing, the technology may be impacting you negatively is insomnia or not being able to sleep. Catherine? There's a song there, Sunrise, Sunset. You know, I was mm. just about to break out to a song. Nice. Insomnia, working into the evening. How many people do that? You know, we do. When you're twinsy-peneurs and duo-peneurs and solo-peneurs and you're running multiple businesses, so sometimes you just work into the evening because you like it. This is really not a good idea. Also, chilling in front of the TV is no better. So if you think about it, there's a study that showed that playing a game involving shooting suppressed levels of melatonin, the hormone that's involved in regulating cycles of sleep and waking. You know, often you say, like, just get out of that, just like you talked about, get out of that blue light. If you're having trouble sleeping, get off the gadgets, get off the TV, go read a book. Right. Put your, put your phone away at least an hour before bed. So it gives your body a chance to reset. What's the third one? What do you got? First? All right, I'm going to ask you about repetitive stress injuries. Oh. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So we see a lot of this in the office. A lot of people coming in with neck tension, pain, discomfort in the wrist and the elbow, the shoulder from sitting in that rounded shoulder position, typing on the computer we're using a mouse all day. And then we end up tend to, a lot of us, we tend to slouch in our chair rather than sitting up straighter. One of the things you can do is actually sit closer to the front edge of your chair and it'll help you sit up straighter. The other thing to do is get up, set a timer and get up every 20 minutes and move and do something different. Because what ends up happening is we end up slouching, we slump 
and our low back gets rounded, our upper back gets rounded, and then our head drops forward. And so from the side, I'm just going to turn around here for a second, from the side we end up looking like this. And it literally affects every single process in our body. And our posture actually changes how we feel emotionally. When we sit up with our chest up and our shoulders back, down and back, we can take a nice deep breath. It's easier to find positivity and optimism. Whereas when we're down here, it's really easy to get stuck in more negative feelings. It's harder to find the happiness, the joy, the optimism. So even just sitting up, getting up and moving around will make us feel better and will lead to a better outcome in our overall health and well-being. Next, and this ties into getting up every 20 minutes and moving around, obesity, which is a big issue in our, in our culture these days. Uh, sitting on your rear, you know, you might have thought about what's happened over the last year, year and a half with sitting down, not getting outside too much. And some people are saying yeah, they're getting fatter. They packed it on. Mm. Some people are relating to this as, oh, my COVID weight, my COVID hair. But let's think about this prior to COVID. Do you sit down a lot? Is that what you do? Is that what you do for a living? If you do and you're sitting on your rear and you're not getting up, you're going to be less active. Simple. You're going to spread. What I talked about yesterday when we were looking, getting the modem fixed, I went outside. Mm -hmm. I walked around the garden. I mean, just get up, step out, like see these roses here. Oh, so you have to they're beautiful, the by garden. the way. Oh, thank you. They really are from, they're from our garden. I love them. And they smell so fragrant. Mm. Get up off your rear, go do something. So go smell the roses. <laughs> Stop the and roses. smell the roses. Stop <laughs> and smell the roses. We totally agree <laughs> and subscribe to that. And there's proof right there. So think about when you're sitting down at your job or you're yeah. playing around or you, you know, that's what you do. Or maybe you're, you know, you like gaming. Perhaps you um, like to do a few other things on the computer that just take your time. They suck your time. Mm. So whether you're sitting down or you're on your phone, you're probably not taking a walk while you're on your phone either. So think about moving. You don't want to become obese. And if you're not sure if you're obese, get on the scale. Ask your friend. How do you close Try on yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, take your clothes off. Take a look in the mirror and you tell me, do you think you're fat? Because if you think you're fat, you are. And then start moving. Now, I know that's a really harsh statement, but I don't really know how else to tell you. If you turn sideways and you don't like the way you look or you don't like the way you look from the front or the back, then change it. Get up and move it, move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about, thank you for that. I love that you can provide a little bit of like music and dancing. That's, I don't know if that's that, how much music that is, but uh, it just always reminds me of the penguins of Madagascar and King Julian, the meerkat uh, dancing to, I like to move it, move it. I've, I've spent a lot of time with my nieces and nephew watching those types of things, so. Well, the song is in our head, right? So that's yeah. what you do and you're getting into our head. Yeah. So let's talk about hearing damage speaking of music do you yeah. hear me dr energy you want to talk about I that i can in fact hear you so one of the big things with being on stream all day is that especially if you're using headphones when you wear headphones all day especially if you want to have the ones that like these that they plug and i'm just pulled it out here for a second you can't see it because it's clear and i'm sitting face on and i have the cable running down my back but if you're using um headphones all day and you have them pushed all the way in your ears the way so it blocks out the outside noise the volume gets very loud personally i can't wear them like that because then i can only hear my own voice rec echoing in my head and <laughs> i have enough voices in my head already i don't need to hear it even more so i pull them out just a little bit so i can hear some of the outside noise and the other part problem with wearing headphones all day is it's putting them the sound directly in and then if you're out walking around in the city, city noises, are, our cities are way noisier than they used to be. So it's really important to take a break from the headphones as much as possible, or when you're in a particularly noisy environment, to wear some sort of ear protection, uh, doing using a chainsaw, mowing the lawn, whatever it might be, it is really important. Or if you're listening to loud music all the time in headphones, it can really play a number on your hearing, so just be careful with that. Next, risk of life and limb. So we're putting us actually in 
Let's talk Physical about this. danger. Yeah. Putting you in danger, right? So think about, <laughs> I'm just going to give it to you like this. If you are looking at your cell phone for a nanosecond and you're driving, hmm. I think you should consider that you're really not doing anybody a service. If you can't stare at the road, look at the road and pay attention because at this time we still use a drive, a steering wheel. We're not on automatic or anything right. yet. So keep your focus there because like, if it, here's the study. The study is that the alcohol blood level, sorry, let me give it to you a little bit straighter than what I'm going to tell you. Um, let me just see if I can, using a driving simulator, we put people on a blood level alcohol of 0.8. 0.08 behind the wheel, and then tested them sober, but using a cell phone a few days later. The person on the cell phone was every bit as impaired. You are four times more likely to have an accident with the phone glued to your ear. I know what you're going to say. I don't use a phone on my ear. I have hands-free. Hand-free phones and voice dialing don't seem to help. It's not so much fiddling with the buttons that put you at risk but rather the conversation itself. It engages part of your brain that would be focused instead of being focused on the road. I'll just give you a personal example. I have a personal driver. My husband drives so that I can work. And because he has the time to do that, we agree that if I'm going to work because I do, when we're in the car to make best use of the time, he'll drive. Because imagine having a conversation with a client and needing to go into your mind and think about something or create some kind of a schedule. You're pretty useless if you can't access your tools. So I focus on what I'm doing. Doesn't mean that if you're driving and you're talking that you know, you're know you not being effective, but maybe that's more of a social conversation. I do recommend that you take driving seriously because you have other people's lives at risk, including your own. So if grabbing the cell phone makes you four times more likely to have an accident, texting, texting doubles your risk yet again. Taking your mind off the road for even a second can be very hazardous. Yet reading and replying to a message tends to take a few seconds. Add to that the need to hold the device steady and it's not surprising that you're eight times more likely to crash while texting. All right. I know that's not a good note. So let's go those right are, into those office. Are some big time stats, man. Like that's, wow. I knew it was bad, but so boring. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> funny. So let's go into office related asthma. Sobering. I was like, really? Office related <laughs> asthma, Dr. Energy. Would you like to chat with us about that? Sure. So one of the one of the big things in our in our society in our culture, especially in offices and high rise buildings now, all the windows are sealed. You can't open a window, so it's a managed air system, and it, things are getting recycled. And yes, some of them have you know they have filters and all that stuff, but it's still recycled air throughout the course of the day, 24 seven, 365 for years on end. And we never get a chance to open up the window. There's dust in the carpets, especially those, you know, people are tracking stuff in on their shoes. They're, they're you know, if they've, if they're smokers and they've gone outside for smoke and that gets in their clothes and then it comes in and you can, and you can smell it. There's, there's all of these things can attribute to the, the ultra fine particles in the air that can get deep in the lungs. And especially in with what's going on in the world right now which we know the lungs are affected then that can make things even worse it can make problems even worse and you know and then add on to that the printers the, so there's toner from the the laser printers they, there's going to be stuff there's going to be powders coming off of that there's the 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 chemical smells from inkjet printers uh, even laser pointers can give off radiation and ultrafine particles so we have to be very careful and make sure we get outside into some fresh air on a regular basis so our lungs have a chance to detoxify because our lungs are actually part of our immune system. There's a chemical in there called surfactant that gets activated when the baby comes through the birth canal. The two surfaces of the lungs get pressed together and then come apart and that activates that part of the immune system. The ACE2 inhibitor, we've probably heard that, that um, or ACE2 receptors, that's probably, you've heard that with what's going on in the world today, that can be affected. And that's why we can get these lung infections. So it is a big 
a big deal to be cooped up in a self-enclosed space all the time. This is why when I look for an office for my practice, I'm all, if I have to move or a new lease or we need bigger space like we're actually doing right now for next week, we always look for office space where we can actually open the windows if we need to. So office-related asthma, it's a big deal. Add to that all the sedentariness of sitting down, sitting in one <laughs> position all the time, and it gets worse and worse and worse. So what's and the exactly, legacy of all this? And Xanthi was talking about the sit-stand desk. <clears throat> and yes, of course, that's a great option. Just I also remember to use it. <laughs> <clears throat> and I do recommend that you walk away from it. <clears throat> walk away from the sit and walk away from the stand. Yes. Just get away from the desk. Because it's great to sit. It's great to stand. We need to do both. But go get some air. Go get water. Go go meditate for five minutes. I understand we're working and it's hard and we're glued to the things that we're doing. But if we do that, we will perhaps receive a different outcome than if we took care of took care of our health right from the beginning it's good because it it just because it also contributes to our mental emotional health to step away from it for a couple of minutes we clear our mind can can clear a little bit and we can go and reset and then come back and if we're working on something that is a problem we can come back and reset and see it with the fresher eyes or fresher perspective so right get away, we're not get performing. Away from it for a while we're not, not performing. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. That's, that's okay. I'm, I'm cool. We're not performing brain surgery. We can step away from what we're doing from and home. then can go back. It's it's cool. All right, and let's so, talk about go before ahead. you before we talk about the next thing. That's actually interesting. You say that about brain surgery because I've I've actually been in an operating room when I was one time when I was interviewing as a neurological operating assistant, and the surgeons actually do step away from a moment or two while they're performing surgery obviously not at a critical time but they do step back from the table for a moment they stand up they stretch they work out some kinks because they, you need to to stay fresh so if they do it we should be able to do it the good ones don't walk away at a critical time yeah <laughs> yeah i wouldn't want the mine ones, to walk away <laughs> the ones that passed with a D, walk away from the patient yeah, yeah, on the yeah. table. Say, I was told to walk away. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about sm smart technology. Six surprising ways to get more bang for your tech buck. Okay, so before we do that, let's just remind everybody, if you have, when you have questions, put a cue in front of it in the chat and that way we can go back through the chat when we get, after we get through this all and answer your questions uh, more easily. It's easy to, easy to see them when there's a queue in front of them. So if you could do that, that would be great. All right, Rara, take it away. Yeah, I'll just, I'm just going to give the title and then you can go pick it up. So let's talk about the six surprising ways to get more bang for your buck. So let's hear number one. All right. So one of the things we can do, we, whenever we think about um, getting the most from our technology and mastering our technology, we always think about new gear. Right. What, what's that? Uh, there's a, there's a term for it. Um, gear acquisition syndrome, GAS, gas, <laughs> right? We all want to get, I want to get the latest and the greatest. Like how many people do you know that get a new iPhone every year? I'm signaling out iPhone because it seems to be more of a big deal with people who have iPhones than it does people with Android phones for some reason, or you get the latest I I've seen already, I've seen for sale used M1 Mac minis, right? So that's the newest Mac mini computer with the newest Apple uh, computer chip in it. Already, they've only been out for six or eight months and the people are already selling them as they're upgrading to newer ones. So we don't always have to get new gear. We can master the gear that we already have. For example, the new, our, our cell phones now have camera lenses in them that are better than the webcams we use. So if you really want to get good quality streaming or recorded video, use your cell phone if you don't want to spend extra money. It's an easy way to get started. Master the different settings. Learn how the manual settings on the phone work. Learn how the transitions or the different scenes, how they affect your composition of your scene. Learn how to frame people more so that there's the right amount of headspace and the right amount of space on the sides. I'm actually, I'm pretty close here. I could be probably stand, stand to be a little bit higher in the frame, but this works. So just learning how to do all of that and, and mastering that, you're going to get more out of your technology. Next, 
update your phone and PC software. Rara? Yep, upgrades. Upgrades can bring major enhancements to your phone, improving performance and added extra features. You know, sometimes you don't want those updates to happen. Well, there's different theories on that. So whatever you choose is your choice, but it's okay to dismiss that update notification if it comes up at work. But make a note in your calendar to install the upgrade on the weekend. Perhaps you want to research what the upgrade reviews are. That's what I do. Anyway, you have to do the upgrades because you just got to, otherwise the phones, if you have an iPhone, eventually you start getting out of the zone. So the same applies to your PC, although it can be sensible to hang out for a few days after the new release to see if there are any showstopper bugs. It's a good idea to let those up upgrades go all the way through. All right, let's Absolutely. go into our third. Oh, you're gonna wanna talk about this. Just let's <laughs> talk about. Go ahead. I'm going to sit here and be quiet. Go talk you about Do you want to introduce it? Oh, so yeah. Sure. I was going to say, let's go talk about streaming. That's how I was going to introduce it for you. Okay. So one of the things that you can, can do is, along with the updating your gear, is make sure your mobile plan fits your purpose. Or make sure your internet plan fits the purpose you want to use it for. There's many people who want to do these types of live streams like we're doing right now. And when we say, we, when I, we ask people, well, so what's your, what's your internet plan like? Oh, I get, I get all kinds of, I get all kinds. I've got like 300 megabits per second or three gigs download or whatever it might be. And well, what about your upload speed? And most people are like, what do you mean? What's my upload speed? They don't know. Most people don't know that it's different what you're bringing down so information you're bringing down from the internet to information you're sending up to the internet and the upload speed can affect everything from your zoom calls your online digital meetings to especially your live stream because our internet fluctuates during the day or especially if you're on like a, a cable type of an internet like a coax in this because several residences will share a central hub and that resource gets shared amongst several homes or if you're in an apartment or condo between condos. Whereas if you're on a fiber connection, it tends to be more steady and there's less fluctuation. And one of the ways you can test your connection speeds is go to fast.com. It's sponsored by Netflix, I think, and it'll give you your uh, download speed and then you have to click on advanced or more, I think it is, and it'll give you your upload speed as well. Though, and when you see your upload speed, you're going to need at least five megabits per second or 5,000 kilobits per second of upload speed minimum in order to stream because of fluctuations. If it drops by 50%, which it can, all of a sudden you're going to be down to 2,500 or two and a half megabits per second. But if you're only starting out with three and it drops, your stream is going to get all stuttery and it's bad. And mm. so I think you just you I think at. you just hesitate as you said it as the universe would have it. <laughs> that is so funny. One of us you hesitated. Just like, yeah, yeah that, no, that was amazing. Like you just if you pl that's it, just make it look like it's part of the show. And I <laughs> I had <clears throat> I was going into streaming and I was going to go back to that one because I wanted you to talk about streaming. So let's yeah. go right into streaming. Sure, go for it. No, you go ahead. Go oh, ahead. go ahead. So yeah. so, I know so you streaming is, is is a is a is great. We love doing this. Now, streaming can also mean streaming podcasts, video podcasts, movies on your phone when you're on the go. And that takes up a lot of data. And I don't know, you know, elsewhere in the world, I think data prices are a little bit better. Here in Canada, we pay through the nose for data. If you want a high limited data, you got to pay a lot. So one of the things that you can do is when you're at home, go on Wi-Fi and download the movie or the video or whatever it is that you want to watch or listen to. So download it to your device and then it's there and then you can watch it that way and then you turn the Wi-Fi off once it's downloaded. And then when you're out and about, you're not using your data, you're not using extra system resources to stream those things. Anything you'd like to add on that? Or you just do what I do and you pay ridiculous amounts of money and you don't download anything and you find out that you're using, we have 10, 10 gigs. Of mobile data. Yep. Right. And I spend thousands of hours. Thanks to Zoom, I'm not on my, like I'm using my phone obviously differently, but we just, I'm not that 
dedicated to that. I just use it when I want to use it. And I'm just like that instant gratification. And if you are, be prepared to pay. Right. And if you want to set some type of reminder in your phone or you want to set some kind of a block that lets you know, aside from what you might get from the service provider, uh, especially if you travel, like right now, I understand we're not traveling, but when we were traveling to the States and going on mm. events for send-out cards, we oh, would just be hit, packages. hit, yeah. hit, yeah, we'd be hit with all this like crazy, crazy prices. So keep your eye, keep your eye on that because we're talking about does IT annoy you? Yeah. you know, why does it annoy you? Why, why are we talking about these things? Because if you get miffed by your phone bill, by your internet, if you get miffed by your device, if you're sort of getting yourself aggravated, we understand. So we want to give you a few tips on how not to. Right. Dr. So, Energy, do you want to talk about HDMI? In a moment. I, at first, I want to ask you, with that 10 gigabits per second, how close do you, to that 10 gigabytes do you come per month? Depends on the month. So the reason why I have 10 is sometimes I surpassed it. Yeah. And now I don't because we are in our home using right. Wi-Fi Internet. more. Right. But I and I'm hardwired, right? So, yeah. but what I how I would go over is I would hop on most of my meetings on Zoom on my phone. Right. And so I was eating through my data because I would be in the car, let's say in a one or two hour commute, right. attending meetings using my data. Yeah. Or the real killer, oh gosh. Put your phone maps on and tell oh, me how much GPS, you eat yeah. through your debt. If you put on any of them, I don't want to say any of them are good yeah, or bad, yeah. but it eats through your data. It's like fifty bucks to go somewhere. We will drive to Philadelphia with you know, it'd be like a hundred bucks. I'm like, I'm burning through my data because we mm. don't know how to get there. So maps, zoom. At this time, I'm not, but I will. I can get up to twelve gigs. Yeah. I've never. I don't Which think I've is, ever gone ever gone over two, but because I'm either at home with my oh, internet right. here, or I'm at the office with internet, so I have the, hooked up to Wi-Fi. Now I do use it, but I do, I do this. I actually download my podcasts over over Wi-Fi, and then I have right. them and then I have them on my phone. Yeah. And so when I'm in the car, I just play it f directly from the phone. I don't have to be connected to data mm -hmm. and using it. So, right, Alexa's joining us. Mm -hmm. Just I lowered her so that she wouldn't disturb us too much. It's eleven thirty. Here's a reminder. reminder: meditate. Thank you. Yeah, thank right. you, so Alexa. The, the next, the next thing. Yeah, premium, we'll talk about HDMI. Premium HDI cables. Here's something I found on the web. According to Wikipedia.org, HDMI is a digital. <laughs> she heard us. <laughs> she thought I was talking to her. Right. Are you, are you talking to me? I'm talking you to you, talking Dr. Andy. Are you talking to me? So HDMI cables, what, what, what would you like to say about that? Take it away. You want me to talk about it? Okay. Yeah, you, you do it so well. So one of the things that oftentimes marketers do, because this is what marketers do, is they will extol the virtues of premium products. And HDMI cables, of course, are no exception to that. Now, there are different standards of HDMI 1.0, 1.4, et cetera. So that is a little different because it changes what data they carry over the HDMI cables. And those are the types of cables that will hook up your gaming system to your, to your TV or hook up your um, uh, internet or cable box to your TV so you can get HDMI television. But premium cables, it's digital anyways. So premium cables are not going to make a huge, huge difference. Now, the connections ends may, you know, gold versus regular metal. Will that make a difference? I don't know. I do buy the gold plated uh, connectors. So I do do that a little bit. I personally have not ha ever had any experience with the lower price cables. I've got a 50 foot HDMI cable that I use to hook up my laptop, which is over here, to a projector for what so when we're giving presentations out and about, and I've never had, and it was an inexpensive HDMI cable. I think it was like 15 bucks, and no name HDMI cable. And I've been using that for almost 10 years, and it's no problem. It's never failed me. So you don't necessarily need to spend 50, 100 bucks on an HDMI cable. Save your money and put it into something, a more critical component, because you can always just swap out an HDMI cable even if it does fail. Right, thank you, good point. 
let's talk about notifications. Mm -hmm. You know, notif I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that because I have a different point of view mm -hmm. on that. I leave my notifications on. They don't bother me. I know how to ignore them and I know how to look at them. Some people just have all the notifications off and when they get to what they're getting to, then you know what you see is what you get. I leave them on. I check them when I want. I check them when I don't. It does not affect me. But some people really need to manage that. So, you know, don't get like sort of sucked in by that. If you don't like being flooded with notifications, <clears throat> so if it's, not, if it's not useful, you don't want to be bothered, just go dive into your settings and make sure the notifications <clears throat> are off for that app. That way you don't have to pull it up and get the repeated intrusions if that's something that bothers you. Now you might not care about notifications like me, but there probably are a few things that annoy you about your phone or your computer. So make a quick list of the three things that irritate you the most about your computer and then set aside some time on a Sunday and just ask Google about those problems. The chances are there's a way to solve them when you go into your settings. So my suggestion is see what bothers you, see how you feel. If you can manage it, great. If you don't want those notifications, but think about if people are saying something to you, like, did you get my message? Did you hear from me? Are you not responding? If you're getting people to say that to you, then just think about it. You don't have to answer that to them as much as you could think to yourself. Am I missing something? Is there something that you should be doing a little differently? Maybe it has nothing to do with your notifications, but how you look at your messages. So if people are asking you, how come you're not doing something, Maybe it has nothing to do with notifications. Maybe it has to do with the way that you follow through on something. So check it out. If those notifications bother you, then do something about it. What do you do for that, Dr. Energy? I am rigorous about getting rid of notifications that bug me. I will turn, I've got, so I've got notifications from Facebook and Instagram and all those LinkedIn turned off. I don't need to know every time, every single time somebody makes a post because I have scheduled times in my day where I go in and check those things. So I have those notifications turned off because otherwise my phone's going off every two seconds and that drives me nuts. Now, it's interesting because as we are now living in this more digital age, there's a, a generation now that has been brought up completely in this digital age. So for them, it's just their reality. So for them, they may not find it as annoying. In fact, they may be looking forward to it. Whereas for those of us who, you know, were, were Im digital immigrants into this, into this idea of, of having our lives online, we want that separation. Some of us want more separation. And the challenge is, is that I think even more so than work, because oftentimes at work, especially in a corporate setting, especially if you're working in the government, the, and Ottawa is a big, obviously, government town. You know, I forget the percentage. So I think it's over half the, the population of Ottawa works directly or indirectly for the government. Um, your technology at work is probably behind what you have at home. And so our digital immersion is actually more at home even than it is at work it's because we have our gaming systems we have our own wife etc etc so we get deeper into it we're allowed we can access more sites because sometimes at work we're, we're uh, our firewalls are set up so that we can't access certain sites and so we get even more immersed in it at home so it can be hard to separate ourselves from that so for me I find, and especially, you know, we live doing these live streams and talking with people on consulting with people because Catherine and I are in different cities and then our clients are again, all over the world as well. So we spend a lot of time online. So I find it really important sometimes just turn those notifications off, get away from the technology. I'll turn my phone off. Even I'll go for a hike in the woods where there's no service and I'm totally cool with that. That's how I approach it. Right. I think, you know, there's so many benefits to it. During the course of my day, I find that some people do send me messages thinking I'm going to be staring at it. So therefore, that's the information I should know two minutes before the meeting. So you might want to let people know your style of doing things like mm. let them know I do not check my messages every five minutes. So if you have an appointment with me, please show up or you know, let people know your style. Like you'll say, if I'm going somewhere, my phone is off. So right. that that's about you know, your personal time and boundaries as well. So I like exactly. to communicate with people like the best way to talk about to talk about things. We'll see you all on the other side.
Ciao. Bye -bye. Ciao.